Hello, this is the fifth in a series of screencasts on the subject of the chemistry of acids and bases for the module CHE 10063. OK, so today what we're going to do is we're going to start moving towards a more general um, description of acids and bases uh, than the Bronsted and Lowry description um, by starting to consider non aqueous solvent systems. OK, and so this basically allows us to move away from um, you know, essentially this definition by which we've always required proton exchange um, for acids and acid and base chemistry um, towards something that's a little bit more, um, you know, inclusive than that. Um, this topic is covered in great detail, actually, in the inorganic chemistry textbook um, on over the course of about four pages. Uh, this QR code takes you to page 176 uh, and, and goes into, de into depth on quite a few um, you know, interesting examples. And I'd, I definitely encourage you to go and have a look there, um, although it does go into more depth than perhaps we need to in terms of this course. OK. So what do I mean when I talk about a solvent system? Well, actually, so far, we've been talking about a solvent system all the way through. We've been talking about water. OK, and we've already mentioned that we know that water will auto ionize, i.e. that it behaves as an acid and a base. And actually, you know, with that knowledge, you can just determine any solvent systems, because as long as you realize that they're going to behave as an acid and a base and when they auto ionize, that's what they're doing. Then, you know, from there, the definition of solvents, other systems comes, as you will see. OK, but anyway, for water, we have this sort of general acid base dissociation, don't we? We've got H2O as a liquid reacting with another water, uh, water molecule. Is going to be in equilibrium with H3O plus aqueous because it's under aqueous conditions plus OH minus the hydroxyl. OK, so that's your sort of classic auto ionization of water. And we know that that has actually got, you know, we've got a, an ionization constant for that. We've got a, an equilibrium constant for that. Sorry. And that that's equal to 10 to the minus 14. Yeah, we've already met that. So we've met the pKW as well, which is 14. OK, but water is not the only solvent that can do this. OK, and basically what we can do is we can extend our Brown's Lowry definitions and we can apply the same thing to non aqueous solvent systems. OK, and so, you know, one example of this would be ammonia auto ionizing. OK, this is still pretty, pretty similar to Bronsted Lowry type behavior because we still have proton exchange going on here. So, again, you know, you can write out in the same way as with water. We've got liquid ammonia adding to another molecule of liquid ammonia or rather liquid ammonia, when it reacts with itself, it's in equilibrium with um, the ionized species of this. And I've just written H, which I didn't mean to do. So let's just cross that out. And again, let's try again. NH4, and that's going to be plus, plus NH2 minus. OK, now I was about to write something um, in this bracket here that I've opened. The key point here is we cannot write aq can we anyone because we're not under aqueous conditions and what we have to write here instead is solve okay so it's a minor point but it's important and that's because we're no longer under aqueous conditions so not aqueous yeah and again you know for the other species that's solve too okay now, the interesting thing about solvent definitions is it doesn't have to only involve species that have got hydrogen. We can also do this with species that don't. So, for example, boron trifluoride. If you've got that in liquid form, then two molecules of boron trifluoride will be in equilibrium with an ionized version of it. So it's BF2 plus plus B F four minus. Now, you know, and again, these are going to be solvated. Yeah. An interesting aside on this one is that, of course, now the species that has gained um, something um, in this case, it's gained a fluoride. So, of course, now that is negatively charged. Uh, it's just a minor difference. But aside from that, we have the same kind of auto ionization process. And again, this will have a, uh, an equilibrium constant just as the one um, 
in ammonia does okay so it's the same process as with water but you know the differences are that we can't describe it as aqueous anymore and of course these have got different equilibrium constants okay now we can move on we've spoken about acidity and basicity in water but how do we define acidity and basicity in war in in other these other solvents okay so in water obviously you know the acid is so, an acid is something that increases the concentration of h3o plus yeah whereas a base would be the thing that increases the concentration of you know oh minus in the case of water yeah now you can apply the same thing to these other two types of reactions, uh, these other two solvent systems. And again, we have, you know, we have to define our acids and our bases. And so in this case, you have your acids are the positively charged species and your bases are the negatively charged species. So once again, as with water, where, you know, the, the species that increases the concentration of H3O plus is the acid and the species that increases the concentration of the negative OH minus is, is a base. It's the same in these solvent systems. A species that increases the concentration of the cation is an acid and the species that increases the concentration of the anion is a base. Okay, so two examples in ammonia, NH4Cl is going to behave as an acid because it increases the concentration of NH4 plus because it's NH4 plus Cl minus. And likewise in BF3, KBF4, so K plus BF4 minus, is going to increase the concentration of boron tetrafluoride, um, the boron tetrafluoride anion. Um, and therefore it's going to you know, kbf4 is going to behave as a base okay another point of course is that you know as you well know in water acid base neutralization would just be acid plus base goes to salt plus water and it's exactly the same in solvent systems you've got an acid reaction with a base to give a salt and your solvent yeah so it's just a more general version of the acid base neutralization that you're already familiar with OK, so let's just finish this up by going through a quick worked example. I'm hoping this is relatively straightforward for you, but nevertheless, um, let's just go through this. So the question is, is does this species behave as an acid or a base in liquid ammonia? Now, if we're going to write, if we're going to go through this example, you know, in a stepwise fashion to make sure we don't make any mistakes, what we have to do is we have to go through this process. Yeah. So the first thing we've got to do is we've identified the solvent system, liquid ammonia. So we're going to write out the autoionization equation. OK, and that is essentially liquid ammonia plus liquid ammonia is in equilibrium with um, our NH4 plus and our NH2 minus. OK, and so, you know, this in this case would be the acid effectively and the base. And as we've already said, the positive charged species is the acid and the negatively charged species is the base. OK, so. You know, we then need to think about this species here, NaNH2. So we can rewrite that as essentially Na plus NH2 minus, can't we? Yeah. So therefore, adding this stuff is going to increase the concentration of the NH2 minus. And so in step three, we need to decide whether it's going to act as an acid and a base. So we're basically saying, you know, NaNH2 is going to increase so increases concentration of nh2 minus so it's going to act as a base yeah okay and so that's really all i need you to know about solvent systems and we'll have some examples of this and you can practice this in the quiz